What have I told you this preview guide was actually because I got reincarnated in another world as an anime previewer who only managed to preview isekai anime. This season is definitely making that feel even more relevant because it feels like it's true. Almost all the anime this season are either isekai or, or isekai adjacent anime. By not being an isekai, an anime is immediately standing out from a crowd and being interesting, rather than just being the same milk toast crap everything else is spewing out right now. But are any of these anime actually worth watching? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. Because this is a 2024 winter anime preview from a different perspective. First up today, we've got the Demon Prince of Momochi House, a supernatural anime where our main character, Himari, who is a girl who's been brought up in an orphanage, receives her will and goes to visit what she finds out is her inheritance, her family home, the Momochi House. She manages to find it in the middle of a spooky forest, despite being told to turn back and go away by loads of villagers who tell her the house is haunted. She doesn't believe them at all, and instead of say, running away saying it's haunted, she decides to stay there, running into three mysterious guys. You got the mysterious Aoi, who first appears naked in front of her, and his two friends Yukari and Issei, who are your stereotypical anime pretty boys. We clearly learn that this is not your normal house, and Yukari and Issei are both yokai. And Himari herself comes under attack from the other evil yokai in the area, only be saved by Aoi, who is actually the, the guardian of a house. This feels like it's trying to be Fruits Basket, but for a modern age. It doesn't really have any major mysteries about it so far. Himari is a shallow attempt to be Toa Honda, but slightly less innocently nice. She's got that energetic, youthful friendliness about her, but doesn't seem to be such a doormat that Toa Honda is. No offence to Toa, she's a lovely girl but she is one hell of a doormat. This is definitely not one for me, but I definitely gathered a lot of fans, most notably the female variety. The pretty boys are very pretty, and the girl is the real stereotypical female insert character in this type of show. That's not to say this is just for Joshi Bait, there's some premise here, there's some meat to this parcel. But a lot of them for Joshi are going to be mostly interested in the meat. It's probably worth looking at, it's not a terrible show, and you can find it on Crunchyroll. Next up today, You've got the anime which really has been plastered everywhere recently. It's Solo Leveling. It's an anime about a guy who is the weakest hunter of a bunch. Hunters are individuals with special powers who are able to enter dungeons to gather crystals for some blatantly evil organisation to create power out of. That's not going to be in any way a terrible thing for a planet whatsoever. I suppose it's clean energy. At what cost? That's the question. But that's not what we're talking about at the moment, we're talking about the start of Solo Leveling and the introduction which really doesn't tell us much at all. The first episode of which is just a very violent episode with a lot of people getting killed and our main character almost getting killed only to be healed by the girl who clearly has feelings for him despite the fact he's being the weakest of all and effectively causing them all to get into lots of danger because having to do tough missions because it's so weak he can't really help them. This one has a lot of following, a lot of people are hyped about this one, so it's gotta be good down the line, but this first episode really doesn't show it. I can see where they're trying to go with it. Clearly the main character, as well as being the weakest character, is gonna have some kind of special ability which lets him either evolve or, I'm assuming level, given fact is, if I'm an anime called Solo Leveling, in a world where apparently you can't level once you got your powers, he probably will be able to. It's just because it's so weak he hasn't been able to do so far. This has all the hallmarks of the first episode of Sword Art Online, only less interesting. I know people hate on Sword Art Online these days, I still enjoy the show, despite what it became to a lot of people. I can see most of them getting a decent following. If you like this type of show, give it another episode or two. I might give it another try, because like I say, I enjoyed Sword Art, and this one does give me Sword Art vibes, but it's on a tight leash. You can find it on Crunchyroll. Next up today, you have Tales of Wedding Rings, an anime where our main character 
meets up with a very, very cute young girl and they become childhood friends. They go to school together and over 10 years, they form almost a boyfriend-girlfriend kind of childhood friend relationship, only unofficial. It's clear he likes her and you can kind of tell that she likes him as well. Unfortunately, when he first meets her, she's being teleported in from another world as she is actually from another world, so this is already almost like a reverse isekai. So it's nice it's not a full isekai, but wait, what have I told you it was? Because 10 years after she first comes to our world, she's teleporting back. And having realized that he does indeed have feelings for her, our main character Sato decides to go chasing after her and ends up boarding into a portal which herself and her guardian are going back into her world through. And so we get teleported into another world. Now the reason why she was in our world was for her own protection. She is the princess. Her name isn't just Hime, she literally is Hime the Ring Princess. The person she marries will get her wedding ring and become the ring hero, a hero of supreme power, able to defeat the Demon King. And she's finally going home because her prince is ready to accept the crown and fight off the demons as the ring hero. So she's needed back at home in order to save the day. However, having seen that Sato has followed her, she abandons the idea of marrying the prince and so decides to kiss and wed Sato and make him the ring king. Much to his confusion, as his son he got told to fight off his demons with a power he didn't know he had because he didn't have it until that moment. And this appears to be a relatively sweet first love anime where a pair of cute lovers finally get together after 10 years of childhood friendness and spend their days ruling a kingdom and fighting off demons. Although looking at the intro or the artwork of this one and the ending, I suspect this one's going to be more of a harem anime as it's not just Hime who he seems to be bedding. There are four other very voluptuous beauties of various species. Will they all be giving him their wing rings? Is him being the ring king going to be the bearer of all the rings of power? To hold power and sway over all races? And fight off a demon king in all manner of ways? Looks like it potentially will be. But it's definitely going to be a very titillating anime. But it's another isekai. It's an isekai harem with an overpowered hero who is going to get all the girls. Same as all we were anime this season, it seems. You can find it on Crunchyroll. Finally today, we have The Strongest Tanks Labyrinth Raids, a tank with a rare 9,999 resistance skill got kicked from a hero's party. An anime which does that. Yep, it's not an isekai. It's an anime with a title which basically tells you a premise. So I don't know what the point of doing a preview is. As the strongest tank is doing some labyrinth raids, he's got a very rare skill, resistance skill, but he gets kicked from a hero's party. And this is his story after that. Our main character, Rud, who is in no way resembling Red from the other kick from a hero's party this season, is kicked from a hero's party because he's just a tank. He has no real offensive powers, he's got two abilities which I don't know what they do because the one person who can analyse them is dead. So I've got no way to analyse exactly what skills are what and he's got his two random abilities which seem to be hurting his battle prowess as he's taking more damage than usual in battle. The leader of a hero's party has decided that rather than having him as a tank, he wants two more women on his arm and has brought in two evasion tanks to take his place. Once you know it, a party of heroes is now the hero and five cute girls. Rather than a big buff guy with a giant shield. Yeah, I'm sure the um, tank skill wasn't the thing which was on his mind. But regardless, Wood accepts his kicking out of a hero's party and goes about just going back home to care for his sister, who is very ill. On the way, he helps this young party of newbies on an escort quest, I don't realise just how powerful he is, but he manages to save a day and also rescue a cute little silver-haired girl on the way. Turns out the silver-haired girl is actually a homunculus, an illegal homunculus with battle powers and skills. We don't know her full story yet, 
But one thing we do learn is that she has got the analyze skill. She can analyze what his new abilities are. Turns out he was taking more damage than normal because one of his skills allows him to take the damage for party members. The other skill lets him turn the damage he takes into damage output. So it's an offensive skill. So yeah, this guy is overpowered as fuck. Needless to say, he'd be welcome back in here as party if people knew what was going on. But I think the story with this cute little silver-haired homunculus girl is going to take him into a different direction. This is not the most inspired anime I've ever seen. But it's a different enough anime this season to make it interesting. It's not an isekai. It's fantasy, yes. And it's one of those verbal diarrhea titles which I love for so much these days. But verbal diarrhea is not always a bad thing. Just look at Kick to Rum Heroes Party and Having a Quiet Life in the Countryside. That's a bloody fantastic anime with a very similar plot. I may give this one on one or two more episodes. The characters are interesting enough to make me want to come back to it. And you can find this on Crunchyroll. That was the Demon Prince of Momichi House, Solo Leveling, Tales of Wedding Wings, and the Strongest Tanks Labyrinth Raids, a tank with rare 9999 resistance skill got kicked from a hero's party. Three anime with decent titles, and one with a title which almost made me lose my voice. What did you think of them? Let me know in the comments, and I'm going to end this quickly, because that title is so long I ran out of time. Bye bye.